Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. I'd like to take a quick moment here to introduce ourselves. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Matthews. I'm the Senior Vice President at Spirit Aero Systems and the Chief Technology and Quality Officer. On behalf of the 3,000 men and women that I lead and the 15,000 men and women at Spirit, I'm honored to be here today to talk to you a little bit about the journey that we've been on with Deloitte. Uh, as it relates to transforming our manufacturing processes uh, and bringing those into the digital world. So, thanks, Kevin. And my name is Subhash Chalapan, and I am a digital transformations leader at Deloitte Consulting. And today's topic of discussion is Spirit Aero Systems Manufacturing Digital Thread, driven by AWS GovCloud. Um, before we dive into all the topics and content, I, I think it's good for us to just set the perspective of why this is a relevant topic today. Five years ago, when we started seeing an influx of IIoT and Industry 4.0 solutions coming into the market with a whole slew of various providers, we did not know how quickly smart factories will become a staple across all manufacturers. Fast forward to today, smart factories is the key competitive advantage for a lot of manufacturers across the globe. And through Deloitte's Insights study, we have found 86% of U.S. manufacturers to deem Smart Factory as the main competitive edge by 2025. And it's also a great platform that recruits new talent with different types of skill sets. So you can see how important Smart Factories is becoming for manufacturers. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about the real life challenges that the aviation and defense manufacturers face and how we've evolved that spirit to tackle some of those problems. And we're going to spend a lot of time today talking specifically about uh, the deployment of our digital thread technologies <coughs> using a Deloitte product called Floorsight running on AWS Cloud. We have effectively have built an ecosystem of smart factory solutions that we've brought into place to enable that digital thread and make our factories much more productive. So brief rundown of the contents. We'll start with the history of uh, Spirit Aero Systems and the type of programs um, at Spirit. And then we talk about the solution, floor site, and, and introduce you to the manufacturing digital thread. And we'll go into the architecture and what it takes to bring it to life. So I wanted to start with, well, who is Spirit Aero Systems? We are not that yellow aircraft that you see at the airport. That is Spirit Airlines. We are the preeminent provider of aero structures to the airline business. So if you flew here today, uh, I can almost guarantee you that you flew on an aircraft that has a significant number of those components provided by our business uh, across the globe. We provide uh, fuselages. We provide propulsion uh, components, which are typically in the form of nacelles and wing components primarily. We are also a major player in the defense platform space, again, from a structural airframe provider perspective and in the business and regional jet market as well. Um, we've got a large uh, business associated with manufacturing as our primary business and providing these elements to our typical customers, which are the OEMs like Airbus and like Boeing. Uh, I don't have a photo of a 737 here, but if you look at that fuselage, that spirit fuselage that you see there in yellow, that is an Airbus fuselage in this example. But we provide that entire fuselage to our Boeing customer. It has about a half million parts on that fuselage. And prior to the pandemic, we were producing three of these fuselages every day. So a significant amount of parts and material uh, resources, human resources, and equipment have to be brought together and orchestrated in a fashion to be successful. Our current mix, you can see there at the bottom, um, we're about 75% commercial, 18% uh, defense, and 7% aftermarket. And we're actually transitioning our mix of product to be 40, 40, 20. So as we considered that transition, which we looked at doing about three or four years ago, we've been considering making this product shift. We knew that we needed to actually make a change in our manufacturing techniques to be able to accommodate that. So what we really looked at was ultimately what do we need to bring all of our people into one platform so that we can get a, a very good comprehensive look 
at what our inventory positions are and the constraints associated with that, our availability of our machine assets, and ultimately our, our human capital and the skills required to put all that together. So we started this journey with Deloitte uh, prior to the pandemic, and it actually has served us well because we had a head start uh, in enabling some of those capabilities before the pandemic hit. And then ultimately when that did occur, unfortunately for us, our business dropped off pretty significantly like most businesses. But instead of retreating and backing up and waiting for the pandemic to pass, we actually pushed harder to make sure that we had our digital tools in place, knowing that uh, we would go back up and rate significantly and we're finding that happening now. And it, it has served us well and it will continue to serve us well as we transition forward. Uh, what we'd like to do next is we're going to show you a six-minute video of the transformational journey that we've been on, and we'll give you a taste and a glimpse into some of the fundamental uh, ecostructure that we've put in place and these smart factory solutions that'll key us off into the following portion of the conversation. So with that, we'll turn to the video for a few minutes. We're really excited to show you. Uh, it's got a lot of great uh, components of what we're going to talk to you today about. Spirit is a tier one aerostructure supplier to the aviation industry. And we are the largest aerostructures business in the world. We build all fuselage structures and majority of the propulsion end items for Boeing programs as well as Airbus. One of our biggest challenges as manufacturing is making sure we've got the right parts, the right people and the right machines available to maintain our schedule and keeping track of literally thousands and thousands of parts is very complex. Our supervision team was spending a lot of time orchestrating the plan in the morning. So we would lose several hours trying to orchestrate which worker will go where and what we can actually work on that day. And so what happened is the frontline managers, instead of managing their process, they were literally out chasing down the panels to find out where they were. Meantime, this piece of equipment that cost tens of millions of dollars is sitting idle. We knew what we thought we needed. We really had no idea how to make it happen. We needed a partner who knew how to develop code, knew how to program workflow solutions, understood the factory floor. And so when we started this journey with Deloitte several years ago, they brought that. And they were willing to roll up their sleeves get on the factory floor at 5.30 with the mechanics and figure out what needed to be done and how it needed to change. Spirit Aero Systems had a very specific problem around machine utilization, and they asked us for our perspective. Meeting with Deloitte, we were able to envision a path forward how to accelerate some of the things uh, relative to the automation and the digital thread that has been lacking. We started with tracking assets using RFID to understand how can material flow to the correct machine at the correct time to increase your machine utilization. And it has really helped streamline our factory flows, make them more lean, and ultimately improve our productivity, our delivery, and our quality. Once we solved that, we realized we could also start to optimize labor resources and figuring out, can we have the right people in the right place at the right time? OptiCrew is a crew scheduling application that schedules your resources based on the latest intelligence of machine health and asset location. <clears throat> Over the past two years, we've kind of put together the symphony of machines and people and labor and conveyance to bring everything together using the digital thread so that everybody on the factory knows what the highest priority is and in what order they need to perform their tasks in order to minimize cycle times for manufacturing. From a supervisor or management standpoint, they no longer have to spend hours gathering data on multiple aircraft throughout their factory. They have that information at their fingertips. 
Working with Deloitte on building the uh, Foresight and Opti crew is really paving the way for the digital transformation in the factories for aerospace and defense. This implementation is game changing for us. In some aspects, it's kind of taken us out of the Stone Age a little bit in how we manage this business. OptiCrew provides new technology to be able to manage their business and manage their labor and manage their constraints to drive productivity. But it's never just about the technology. It's about the process, it's about the people, it's about staying focused on driving business value, and the technology should support that theory. What we saw almost immediately was a 10% improvement of on-time completions. And then we saw about a 10 to 20% reduction in span, which helps us actually control the amount of number of days we need to build a product, which translates into cash and savings that we can keep in our pocket to keep our business viable going forward. Smart Factory is going to be really, really important for manufacturing companies to remain competitive. There's a lot of a new technology that's been put out there that can really help businesses grow, become more productive and more efficient. And a factory doesn't have to be new to be smart. We just have to bring the right ecosystem of technologies to the table. Plant 2, where we build the 737 fuselage, is an 80-year-old factory. And a great thing about the floor side and OptiCrew technologies is that we didn't have to overhaul our manufacturing process or system to implement it. It's really come in and been an add-on to the existing factory. In order to connect your engineering to your manufacturing to your aftermarket support, you really have to have a connected digital thread and all that starts and ends with data. So by digitally enabling their factory, using smart factory initiatives, they are able to increase their efficiencies, increase their throughput, reduce their capital, reduce the amount of inventory they have, really connecting operational levers with financial benefits that drive bottom line value. That's the sound of money. <laughs> Captured that for a sound bite. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It really surmises um, all the activities that we've been focused on and working to collectively together on. And we're going to get into more of the details here. But one of the quotes that my boss, who you saw in this video, Tom Gentili, the CEO, you know, he focusing on making sure we have the right people working on the right part, right jobs at the right time. And I would add also having the right equipment available to do that. And so the transformation that we've been on, this, this digital thread becomes the foundational element of how we made that happen. And what we're going to talk to you now about is actually Deloitte's implementation of a product called Floorsight using AWS Cloud to answer these questions because our business is so radically dynamic and changes minute by minute. Um, we, would, we would normally only plan in the morning to be able to run our factory for that entire day. And what we knew a long time ago is that that plan was only good at that moment in time. And so by implementing these digital tools that we're going to describe here in a minute, we're able to dynamically understand how our factory is performing and we can ebb and flow and change the plan in any given moment. And we'll talk to you a little bit about how we do that. And to reiterate the business cases, once again, it was uh, material management, making sure that we know where the right materials are, bringing it to the right place at the right time. Uh, it's also about labor optimization, making sure we have the right folks working on the right jobs at the right time. And that requires a lot of data and finessing uh, information. And then lastly, it's about avoiding machine stoppages. That's a, a, a big sink for cost and time. And ultimately, it's about building it right the first time. And that's where the digital thread comes in. And so we started this journey two and a half years ago, almost three years ago. And we were here in uh, reInvent two years ago. At that point in time, we had one app and it was called Auto Cells. And we took our time to build right, built it right using the appropriate AWS services. In a span of two years, we have grown that into eight applications. And that's you know, tremendous amounts of data that we're crunching every single minute of the day. And so we'll go through those eight applications right now. 
And um, we'll start off with what we call skills matrix. And skills matrix is essentially employee proficiency. It's about understanding does the right employee have the right skills and certifications and hours worked so that when our algorithm starts optimizing for who the right person is, it produces or suggests a, uh, a, a person's employee ID with their amount of time worked and also are they the right fit for that particular job that's being worked on. And also that information gets used for cross training. Right? When you have other employees that require assistance from more skilled employees, we utilize this score or algorithm to tell us how we cross train folks. Second item is precedence or precedence diagrams. And this solution is, or app is more around um, uh, finding out you know, what are the redundancies in the manufacturing process. So if you have you know, precedences moving from A, B, and C throughout the whole journey, are there redundancies in that process? Eliminate that, and that produces standard work. Standard work feeds a whole array of other aspects in our solutions that we, that we utilize, and it's a very important metric for us to track in our applications. And the third item that we utilize is an application called MES integration. MES, of course, being on the plant floor execution system, we're a layer above that. And we need to ensure the information from the claims and the stops are consistent with what we're displaying on our application. So keeping it synchronous at all times is key so that folks do not get the wrong information. Now the next two applications are like our crown jewels. So these are our scheduling applications. AutoCells is a mas machine scheduling information, uh, application that provides information of machines based on uh, the availability of material, and can those materials come together on that machine to begin their sequence or to begin their next step in the manufacturing process. Uh, we have built a real robust and, and, and intelligent algorithm behind the scenes to give us you know, up-to-date information based on material, based on transport, uh, movement of material on, on the factory floor, understanding of machines are available using machine data. It's, it's a lot of information. But synchronizing that and trying to find the right step of being able to uh, schedule your next job, that, that's where the visibility comes in. And the reverse will be for OptiCrew, which is our labor scheduling. And in this particular application, it's about the skills matrix, precedence, et cetera, that we just spoke about. It comes together to tell us who the right person is for the job that needs to be worked on. And it's pretty dynamic. Supervisors get to use that on a daily basis and interact during their, their meetings. And they schedule on the fly, which is great, which also uses the algorithm to say, is this the right person or is this the wrong person? Yeah, that's a good segue into these next three apps, really. So you know, we're a highly regulated industry, uh, aviation and defenses. And it's long in the tooth. 1909 was one of the first production sites uh, that went into existence building the Wright Brothers Flyer. And since that time, the regulatory agencies have had tremendous oversight to ensure the safety of all of us as the flying public. And so what that means is, is that we have to make sure that the mechanics and inspectors on the floor are doing their work in compliance with the skilled matrix and other subtleties, which I'll describe in a second. But because of the fact that we've actually deployed floor site and we've de deployed tablets to our mechanics actually working on the floor now, we had the opportunity to actually, for the first time ever, provide our mechanics with detailed visual work instructions. And I kind of describe this as the YouTube way of instructional videos. Uh, today, if you want to take something apart and fix it, one of the first things you probably do today from a tech perspective is you'll go look it up and somebody's posting on YouTube or some other means of how to take that apart, fix it, and put it back together. That's what these visual work instructions actually do for our mechanics in a compliant way. We've enabled them to see digitally how to build the aircraft and actually put that together where in the past they would have actually had to go pull blue, uh, blueprints, 2D drawings, and specifications and figure out actually how to assemble it uh, based upon the knowledge that they have. So that was a huge upgrade for us. The supervisor portal, uh, Subash mentioned it earlier. In the morning, what we were having our supervisors, and we, we've got 20 million square feet, which is the size of a small city, all of our supervision team would have to go out and figure out who actually showed up that day and who didn't, and actually have to try to figure out how to adjust their plan 
uh, based upon who's there and who's not and what has to get done that day. Now this portal actually provides solutions to them. It will actually show them who is available to do that work based upon our certifications, that skills matrix component that Subash talked about, and actually schedule uh, that individual to do that job today based upon the constraints that are in the factory and what we want to get done. Uh, this has been a tremendous boost to our management team and their ability to actually comprehend what actually needs to happen and how to actually get it effectively done. This third piece, the command center, on this piece I'm going to talk about the command center from a constraints perspective and the operational support piece, and I'll talk about it in a different piece in a minute. But this has been a phenomenal boost to us with all of the supply chain impacts that we're all having. This command center actually tells us where our constraints are in our factory, whether it be a, a part constraint, it could be a people constraint, it can be a machine constraint. And again, it automatically and dynamically provides solutions so that we don't have to go try to figure that out. And it does it based upon a series of rules so that we get the most optimal solution at that point in time. Uh, this has been a phenomenal boost to us and will serve us well as we continue to work our way through these supply chain uh, issues that we're all facing globally here. Uh, from a support organization effective uh, point of view, one of the things that we wanted to know is how effective are our support organizations. So manufacturing engineers, industrial engineers as an example, or quality uh, folks that need to support the factory and make the factory run proficiently. We use the command center and we look at that as a constraint as well. How long is it taking for an individual or a group to resolve a constraint that's holding up our production system? And so we can get all of that information out of the command center app and be able to uh, improve upon it and actually make it better for the next iteration and understand where our bottlenecks are. And then finally, we have a, what's called an MES and on system. Um, historically, in a manufacturing process, when you have a problem, you've heard the, the phrase pull the chain or stop the line, uh, and on systems provide a technique or a way for the manufacturing uh, individual, the technician, the mechanic, or the inspector to raise their hand. And in historical fashion, they would flip a switch and a light would flash. And someone would have to see that light and actually come over and address the problem. Now what happens, because it's in a digital domain, we actually provide information about what the condition is. So when the mechanic or technician is having a problem, they indicate what kind of problem they're having and what job they're on. That information gets automatically and immediately sent to a group of people that will come over and resolve that problem for them. And they get that information digitally as well. So not only do they not have to look for the light and come over and ask what's happening, but before they even get there, they now know what the fundamental issue is, and they're actually actively resolving it before they show up to actually physically resolve it on site. So how do we bring it all together uh, on GovCloud? <clears throat> this architecture was refined over a period of two and a half, three years, and after finding the right services, we began building upon that foundation and getting to where we are now with eight applications and livening up the manufacturing digital threat. Each one of those applications living as a front end representation, but in the back end, we have a whole host of services that are supporting it and providing the information that we need in the SLAs that we require them at. And so to bring this to life, um, I'll start on the far left. We have a whole host of data that we're sourcing from ERP systems to warehouse management systems, um, including you know, data on the ground using sensors. Uh, we're also leveraging machine data, and all of that gets aggregated into the cloud, into our data mart, where we begin applying transformations and where we begin to create the views that we need in order to uh, extract insights from. Our analytics engine is built on our own proprietary uh, analytics engine running on EC2s. And with that information, we feed it back to the bottom left, which is all of the different hardware and devices on the ground. So supervisors, operators, mechanics, they all have their various devices and tablets, touch screens and handhelds, and we're delivering these applications to them. And there's a lot of demand for, for insights as they continuously grow, and we have to keep this architecture uh, growing over time. If I were to summarize what are the top four solutions that we, that we like and love and that we use every single day. It's RDS, 
Lambdas, API gateways, and CloudWatch. With these four services, which I'll talk about in the next slide, um, we have been able to achieve the, you know, the levels of throughput that we needed on, on the front-end applications, and also bringing this with a, with a design principle of microservices and decoupling. What does it look like in the world of Floresight and AWS GovCloud? Well, every day we have approximately five million plus transactions that are coming in the span of four to five minutes. And all that data gets transformed, cleansed, and it gets you know, uh, provided to our algorithms to be crunched and ran so that we get the, the uh, schedules and recommendations. But also, um, we have all the folks on the floor that are using the apps and, and they generate up to four and a half million API calls. Um, to get the feeds that they need or to get the, the metric that they require on their front-end applications. So to keeping that seamless, keeping that operating in a smooth fashion, that's, that's absolutely uh, important to us. And finally, we run close to about 7 million queries on, a, on any given day. And um, with that number of, of queries running, we need an environment that is able to expand horizontally and vertically to be able to adapt to those kinds of queries and demands that we have. So like I said, the four top services for us, I'll start off with Lambdas. It has really propelled us in, in a way where we begin you know, developing more in a microservices-based uh, architecture, keeping our code optimized and running within the 15-minute thresholds, if not lower, utilizing uh, throttling to, to kind of zero in on, on queries that are taking too much time that are not optimized, and that helps us maintain the, the level of service for the applications when they are operating on the floor. Second is API gateways, which has been great. Uh, we've, we learn as we go along the way, and you know, we've been utilizing caching in our gateways. Uh, we're considering uh, you know, bringing in different types of caching methodologies, but APIs have really helped us decouple the front end and the back end and just focus on, on different aspects of development as we continue to grow. RDS, great service for us. Um, you know, introduces different levels of IOPS where we, as we continue to grow the queries, as we continue to grow the different types of um, insights that we're producing through, through our analytics, we have the ability to do in-memory OLTP caching through SQL. Um, we've also, in the next iteration, been considering read replicas, which is phenomenal to, for separating reads and writes. And finally, CloudWatch, great service to have in any solution, having that level of insights of what's going on in the inner workings of, say, your Lambda or your code, and considering what you need to optimize to keep your folks on the floor happy. So all of this has to have and yield a business value. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing it. So what we wanted to do is just share a small snippet of some of the values that we've already seen and then for us, I won't even call it an expectation. We know that there's tremendous value yet to be harvest, harvested in the capabilities we've already deployed, let alone some of the other things we've actually looked at. Uh, we're really thankful, and I'll do it now instead of what I was going to do here at the end, but we're really thankful to the Deloitte team and Subash personally uh, for the commitment and the capability that you brought to Spirit. Um, I will tell you, we're on the leading edge of the aviation and defense market space in terms of being able to harness the power of the digital thread and all these tools, and we're honored to work with such a great team. The, the results, just a few of them. So our machine utilization, uh, you saw in that video a very intense factory that has a lot of really expensive equipment. Um, you know, I would guess we have probably four or five billion dollars worth of assets easily. So a 10% improvement in utilizing what we have translates to the 400 or 500 million dollars of savings that we don't have to go out and buy new equipment because we can utilize it better and continue to go up and rate and sell more product. Uh, we'll see these numbers actually improve as we deploy across even more of our equipment space and understanding it. And also the, the actual maintenance of that equipment also was a big portion of this. From a labor realization perspective, our reduction in quality labor, uh, resulting in the fact that we have product that's being built right the first time, uh, is really important. And actually, that labor realization component is because our mechanics are more capable of building product, I wouldn't call it necessarily quicker, but more efficient with less downtime, 
Uh, those are huge savings. I mean, we would, you know, any company would kill to, to have a 15% improvement in cost of goods related to labor alone. And as we continue to deploy this tool across our global factories, we're going to see greater and greater benefit. And probably the lifeblood of every company right now is liquidity, cash. We have a, an immediate 20% savings in on-hand inventory. That is, that is cash in hand that we can actually redeploy to keep our business functioning and moving forward. Um, you know, can't say enough good things about how important this has been for inventory because now we know where everything is. We know where it's at on the factory floor at any given moment. We know how it's moving through the line. We know what's in inventory and we also understand our constraints so we can actually manage our inventory with a lot greater specificity than we've ever done in the past. Ultimately, that results in a bunch of different things, three things that I kind of keyed off of. So manufacturing span is how long does it take from the time you start building that product to the time it leaves the factory? And by reducing the number of days, or in some cases, hours or minutes, depending on you know, the, the production system you might have, reducing that ultimately results in a lower cost of goods sold or the cost it actually takes to produce the product. So having these tools, being able to make sure that we're efficiently working through the factory, we're able to lower those number of span days uh, constantly, and we're driving cost out of the system, which is important to our customers because it's important to all of us when we fly, the one thing that we want is we want an affordable ticket. And if you look at the price of airline tickets over the years, they've either actually decreased or stayed flat. And there's a reason for that is because all the hard work of the aviation industry behind you, making sure that prices stay in check. So this is yet another enabler of that. And again, probably for us um, this year, and like a lot of companies, reducing that working capital has been huge. So again, thank you and hats off to the Deloitte team. Phenomenal job. Thanks, Kevin. Um, that ends the presentation, but that doesn't end the journey. Uh, Deloitte would like to welcome all of you to come visit our Wichita State Smart Factory. And this is a facility that's been built ground up with a whole host of use cases. Uh, and I know we touched on it uh, you know, with, with the work we're doing at Spirit. But over here at the facility, we have end-to-end -end cobots bringing that information to life, being able to utilize it in different ways, um, you know, quality systems and how to extract that information and a whole host of other uh, cool new IIoT and Industry 4.0 applications that uh, everyone would love to see and interact with. And that could probably inspire the next solution that you're looking for. And with that, thank you, Kevin. I really like to thank everyone for joining us and um, open to taking any questions you may have. Yeah. Absolutely. So, do you want to repeat it? Yeah. So the question was, when we ran our algorithms for uh, for our skills matrix app, do we come across a problem where the same person would be scheduled for multiple jobs or over scheduled? Right. Well, yeah. When we first ran the pilot for, with our algorithm, absolutely. Like we're finding you know a whole host of issues with the math behind the scenes, but it's it's about iterative development, right? The more you find issues like that, you get the architects and the functional folks together and we start talking to our IEs on the floor to reassess the algorithm, to reassess the rules that we're putting in there to, to say that if they already are assigned, then do not, right? So there's a lot of techniques and tips and tricks that we have learned across the uh, board, but it's just a more iterative way of, of building. I, I think what, what's something. really interesting about it is our um, on the floor supervisors and manage, management team always went to the same individual to solve, let's say, a variety of problems on any given day. And so the, what the tools really help them with is understand what, and this is really important, is what people are certified to do that work, because that's first and foremost. Uh, before they may not be able to get that information rel relatively quickly, 
But the tool has served us well in that domain space as well as making sure that the individuals that are presented to do the work are certified. So that's an easy check. But it has actually given our supervision team knowledge about who has actually done that task before. Even though they may not have done it recently, they still might go to that same person that's probably doing it uh, fairly regularly. But now they also know that somebody else has done it. And more importantly, what they're doing is they're actually now making sure that the individuals on the list actually go through and periodically do that work so that they're refreshed. So there's a lot of all these ancillary insights, but you're right, the algorithm would pick the, the best person, but our management team has learned how to use that tool to make sure that we even that out and get everybody um, constantly redoing the work, because we call it standard work. Uh, the more times somebody does that work, the better off and more proficient they become at it. So what we're finding now is our, our leaders are actually seeking to actually vary that work a little bit because we do have people that don't show up to work for a variety of reasons, vacation, they might be sick, COVID. Um, so it's actually served us very well to be able to use that tool and understand a little bit more uh, insight into how that all plays out. That was a great question. Yep. All right, so are you guys using graph databases at all to connect uh, like the various parts of the thread for any individual machine? And are the apps that you talked about today, are those apps that were built by Deloitte specifically for Spirit Aero systems, or are those Deloitte products that Deloitte sells to manufacturing clients more generally, and they customized it for Spirit Aero systems? Great question. So it's the latter. But let me start by saying, no, we have not chosen graph databases yet. But it's in our uh, roadmap. So we are definitely considering like new ways of making the queries in the back end more efficient, right, right off the bat. Um, but because th these are all transaction based and they're all transaction heavy, going that route may deter us from being more optimized in the way that we do our searches. You know, schema maintenance, indexes, all that good stuff that SQL provides does help us attain the efficiency that we need uh, in, in you know, providing the insights. But yes, it's still part of our consideration as well. I mean, decoupling like reads and writes, like all of those kinds of efficiencies are helping us attain, you know, the quick returns on on the uh, um, on the outputs of the queries. Um, but the solution that we've developed is is part of our smart factory suite of solutions, and we use that at at our smart factory facility as well. Um, we have two other use cases and, and clientele that we have continued to grow the application on, and we continue to customize a specific per percentage of our scheduling applications for our clients. So it's not specific uh, just as Spirit. There's customizations for Spirit, but the main application, the base smart factory solutions, are for everyone. Services. That is correct. And is there a place where we can go to actually sign up for, you invited, you said we could come to the Smart Factory. Is that like a bona fide invite? Or yeah. is that more of like a cordial? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Bring your bosses, bring everyone. Come see us afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Come, come see Just Spirit too. Come, come see us and we'll, okay. yeah. awesome. we'll get you connected. Yeah. And we'll have you out to Spirit as well. Yeah. So you can see it in action. Other questions? It. It's kind of hard to see anybody. But <laughs> well, we appreciate all of you for coming in here yeah. today, and uh, we'll be out in the audience. So, yeah. thank sure. you. Thanks.